Welcome to the BXG podcast, the podcast where pop culture and nerd culture meet at the nexus of the universe and are melded as seamlessly as dinosaurs and out of shape basketball scouts. I am one of your hosts, the Alpha Donut Guy, Brenton Bestwick, alongside my co-host. ADG. I'm just, I'm all in on it. You know? I love it. You should be. It's great. Um, I didn't even question it. I didn't even question it. You're like ADG. I'm yeah. like, I know what that is. Yeah, the ADG. And uh, alongside my co-host, Greg Filson. Greg, how are you? As someone who used to also go by just initials, right. uh, GTP, right. with the three at the end every once in a while, for those in the know. Right. I also went by GDP in college. Gross um, domestic. Gross domestic product. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm doing all right. Uh, I am currently watching Golden State in Boston in game six, of the NBA finals while we're doing the pod. Yeah. Because uh, I'm a professional and I can multitask. Uh, how are you doing, Brenton? I'm good. I'm not watching at the same time, but that's just because I don't have a like TV around me, basically. Or else I need I'd to probably, fix that. Tell Ty. I'd probably. <laughs> he helped me hang the one in my living room i'm just not in the living room Mm. so um but yeah i um if you could punch one person in the face as hard as you could and get away with it who would it be because mine would be stephen a smith so okay yeah it has to be someone famous punch one person in the face um oh just anybody the the guys that do the basketball like videos the uh those guys suck the like you're gonna need to be more specific i know no 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 um oh my gosh they're like the stunt the and one guys no 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 not the and one guys like they just they're all just stunt performer guys i just hate all that stuff uh i'll look it up real quick we'll just uh and they're like super famous now they get on like espn what? and i just hate them uh yeah oh my gosh i now it, it's so weird i wish i would i would have been on this they're so bad uh, i'm sorry yeah i did kind of surprise you with that that's that, okay uh, that's okay um uh, yeah those guys i just I, you know what just i uh, hear this is actually the easiest way to do it uh for me it's bros and I, there's not a specific one but if i could just take any of them one of them, yeah. the bros that do the videos where they just take a ping pong ball and bounce it downstairs and then it lands in a cup. Yeah. I, and they probably I, did like 400 takes of that. Video. At least any one of them, I would punch squarely in the face. I hate those yeah. videos. I hate they show up in my feed. I like stop following sports center on Instagram because that's literally all they do now. Yeah. It's like there are people coming close to, you know, no hitters making amazing catches. The right. Mike Trout catch last night that I was there for wasn't right. even on the sports center until this morning because they had a fucking video of a guy bouncing a ping pong ball into a cup. Yeah. So any one of the, you literally just pick one for me. Cause I'll just punch them square in the face. It's like, you guys suck. You did 400 takes of this and you're like, Oh, I, finally, I did it. Uh. Yeah. Right. Any of those guys. Yeah. I would put a 10 piece chicken, nugget, chicken nugget combo on Steven Smith in a cocaine heartbeat. I see this is the thing, I like I don't stand him. I don't watch those shows. I don't follow him. I stopped watching that. Do you remember when the show was called Pizza? Uh, I like very was, early I was in the uh, 2000s. I'll be honest with you. I was out on ESPN when it stopped being just sports center from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. I'm a PTI guy. I'll always be a Tony yeah. and, and Mike guy. I'll always be a Tony and Mike guy. I don't watch unless the sports are actually on. I don't yeah. watch it. Sports Center is dumb. It doesn't. Sports Center is not even Sports Center anymore. Right. It's they just talk to like Perkins, and <laughs> like which is even. To, I'll tell you what that one might. He might even be worse than Steve and I. It's bad. Um, it's the personalities are so bad. It, yeah. ESPN used to be good. Yeah, that's the thing. Awesome. Like I feel like I grew it, up like, on it, Sports Center. You know what it I mean? Was, like that's I mean, what it was. Yeah, it was Sports Center and. I mean, this is more like regular show content, but like this is, I'll just go through a quick daily routine. I used to wake up, I used to work out to Mike and Mike, and I used to watch um, SVP or Solo. And yeah. then I would go to work. 
Well, I'm talking like, even further back. Like when I was a kid and it was summer break, well, it was yeah. sports center. Oh, yeah, sports 11, center. Yeah. Then the price is right. And then whatever. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Even younger. I mean, I didn't get cable until or satellite because where I grew up was, you know, I lived in the boonie boonies. Yeah. And so like, we didn't actually have access to any of that stuff. Till I was like 12 or 13, I think. Right. So when I got ESPN, it was insane, but also like the way our satellite was, I got like everything. So I was watching like soccer in like middle of Asia just because yeah. it was sports. Yeah. All right. And so, but yeah, it's, yes. Oh, but everything's bad. Now. There's nothing yeah. good. That is just, yeah. I think that's the thing. Everybody just has to argue about everything. It's like, I saw somebody today was like, people were mad because Steph Curry like chews on his mouth guard. It just makes me mad because it's gross. It grosses me it's out. I don't also been going on for 15 years. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Get over yeah. it. Yeah. That, that's the other thing. But it's just like, it's gross. But like, he's not doing it because he's being arrogant. He's doing it because it's probably a nervous reaction to things because he's a professional athlete. I don't know. Yeah. In any case, any I, case. Um, next year, next spring, 2003, will be 20 years since we both graduated from college, Co- high school, excuse me. Not I was going to say, what? I didn't graduate college that quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 20 years since we graduated high school, I got invited to a class of 2003 Facebook group this morning, and I accepted it. And when I came home, uh, I left the group. And it gave you nice. like, a, it gives you feedback options. Like, why you, why would you leave the group? And for me, it was no longer relevant. <laughs> I have um, never went to any high school reunion. Um, and what's I, the first well, one? Five? Five. Yeah. Yeah. And I still I, live there. And didn't, I said, we didn't do one no. for 10. Yeah. Well, it, they had my five year reunion was at the gross, or maybe it is only 10. I think it is 10. It might five. be 10. Yeah. I would say, like, I, I didn't but go to any of them. I live, they had mine at the Grove City Country Club. That's five nice. miles from my house right but like i told you i one of my friends mike uh kennel asked are you going to the reunion i said no i said i don't i don't i don't hang out with these people for free all year and now they want me to pay to hang out with them what it's so true that's the thing so like, i actually say, have tried to be not around you people right i mean you you moved ha- the whole way across the country yeah i'm like, across country just to avoid right. these people so when I, I like, I was like, okay, I feel like this like weird, mild obligation. So I joined the group and I just looked at the post and I'm just like, fuck everything. No, thank you. Like, I don't want to hear about, I don't it. even know like why, yeah. like, I just, it's, I it's, am in contact with the people that I'm in contact with right, for a reason. Right. And that's it. Yeah, like, exactly. I yeah. I talked to two people I graduated with. I talked to two people I graduated with from my high school. That's basically where I'm at. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. Two people from my high school. And then that's that's it. So one person from not my high school. And we're looking at each and other. That, and that's <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> so yeah, that's I just it. thought that was I just thought that was funny. I was just like, ugh, people. You know? Like if you're still going your 20 year, I I, I you know, I think it's whatever. like at this point. It's like the still the socialization thing, but like when you get to like 30 and 40, you just go to see who's still alive, basically. Like that's what my yeah. mom said. She's like, Yeah, I go to all my high school units just because I'm trying to figure out who I outlived. Right. I understand so, that. That makes more sense. Yeah. 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 But not at our age. No. Because if you outlive people now, it just means something really bad happened. Happened you know, to like, them. Yeah, yeah, you didn't right. do anything. Yeah, you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything cool. You just yeah. existed. Yeah, you just yeah. woke up every day and didn't have testicular cancer, and that's it. Right, among other things. Right. You know? Yeah, bus hit you, car accident, whatever. You know. Bought some so, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, hey. Anything else? Any? Uh, we got a lot. We got a lot to talk about tonight. We got a big show. Um, oh, two movies, just, two TV shows. Yeah, the, I would just no say, three TV uh, shows, three TV three TV shows. Yeah, yeah three TV I shows. Jeez, um, I forgot about that one. Oh, we haven't talked about Ricky. 
No, we haven't talked about Ricky. And that was actually what I was going to bring up is yeah. I've been, I've watched a few stand up things. David Letterman actually has like this 18 to 20 minute thing on Netflix about with stand ups or like whatever. Doesn't matter. It, it, you watch the first five minutes for Dave and then whatever. It, it makes me sad that Dave doesn't still do late night because I feel like he would still crush it. It wouldn't, it would be no problem. And Dave's my favorite of all time. That's just where I'm at. But to hear Ricky and I watched this, it was about three weeks ago now, two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, at least three. Super at least three. Yeah. Um, I haven't laughed that hard at stand up in ever, I think. I, I think that may actually be my qualification of it. And it not, it's not because maybe it was funnier, but it was because he was being funny. Like he was offending people, everyone. He left no one off the charts right. he checked no, off he doesn't he had, ever it was a bingo card yeah. where you just offend everyone cover all cover and all. it was awesome and yeah. i loved it it was so funny and it's like i mean if you're someone that gets offended you're not gonna like it you just won't you're not gonna like it two minutes in well, <laughs> not 30 seconds in you're not gonna like it he goes straight to like stuff yeah and i don't want us to get canceled because of what he, but he doesn't there's no brake pushing. He doesn't. No, even, I just think the no. car just has a gas pedal and a clutch, and that's it. There's no. It's so good, and it's like I think that's what he was trying to do. Was like I don't care. I literally now I don't care. I didn't care before, but now that everyone's so offended, yeah, I'm just gonna try. Like it was. It was almost like this special should have been called. I'm trying to get canceled. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he didn't get canceled after his last one, which was uh, humanity, right, 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 he's bulletproof. You know what I mean? Yeah, because right, he right, went right. he went so hard in that one after Caitlyn Jenner that it was like almost to the point where it was a little bit uncomfortable. Ah, uh, Brucey, you fucker! <laughs> that whole thing, and like I've watched, I've watched, I. <laughs> This one was really funny. And there was like, this isn't any kind of spoilers or anything, but when he said the three words, free range dwarves, I, oh, almost, I almost died. I fell I, off the couch. I, I spit, I spit my entire drink the entire way across the room. And obviously it's a lot like just hearing that sentence in general is just like, what could that mean? But right. when you get to add the actual context of what that joke was, it's like, holy shit. But I honestly think, I th as good as that one was, I actually think Out of England Part Three is probably my favorite of his sets, and that's not it's really good, on yeah. YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah. It's not on anything yeah. else. No. Yeah, but the whole it's thing really good. Is on YouTube. Um. But yeah, I mean, he goes like you said. He goes after everybody, and he even says early on. <laughs> I, which I think it was him kind of talking about the, the Caitlyn Jenner thing. And he says, well, it's not offensive. You find it offensive. Right. And right. that's like, I think where people get, get caught up on things is, well, you find it to be offensive, but you also don't have to watch this stand up. Right. It's kind of like you're, if you're watching records of ace, if you don't know what you're getting into, then yeah. that's on you and not on him. And right. Exactly. It was, I don't, it's been a long time that I like cry while like watching something and laughing. Mm -hmm. I cry a lot at everything else. I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I think I've mentioned this before. Yeah. That I'm, a big, yeah. I'm a big crier now. Like I yeah. turned 30, like, and I just cry at everything. I mean, I, I, I've cried at Field of Dreams since I was first time I watched it. That's a movie. Sure. I mean, but that was it. That was the only time I cried between the ages of like 10 and 29 i never like you could like i probably could have got shot in the arm and just been like that hurts but probably no tears i didn't yeah. know i was like jerry seinfeld like what is this salty discharge coming from yeah sure right. and then you turn and like watching this and i think it more i think it was very funny i do think it was very funny but i think it was also more of a thing of like oh like people just aren't funny anymore yeah and i think that was part of it, it was like comedians i'm not a this is so funny because I like comedy. I don't think there's many good comedians and I don't think there's many that I actually don't think there's a lot of funny people. I really don't like, I just, 
but Ricky Gervais just doesn't care so much. Yeah. And that's kind of the key. I think Mm -hmm. you can either do what he does where he doesn't care at all, or you do like the Jerry Seinfeld thing where you're, it's irrelevant to care. Right. Like Jerry Seinfeld, he, his comedy is good now. It's good 20 years ago and it's good 20 years from now. Yeah. Cause there's nothing there. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that like, if you like Seinfeld, like it's just, it's so much just like observation and right. You know, and people sort of are thing. always going to be people. That's yeah. the thing, but it was, it was refreshing. I think that's the thing for me. It was like a palate cleanser of like, cause you know, I, I was a huge fan of John Mulaney for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then obviously he had his problems, but also he just stopped being funny. Like there was also a thing where like, he just, I don't know. And it's weird. Like his whole situation got weird and he wasn't funny. And he came back and then he had Dave Chappelle come on a set and it was terrible. Yeah. It's like, you don't need Dave Chappelle to come on to be like, now you're kind of proving that you're not as funny as you thought. And it was super weird. I guess my thing is, is like, we need more people like Ricky Gervais to just go out there. And it's like, either you think it's funny or not, but it's not their fault. It's not their fault. I will say if Ricky comes to do like an American tour and he comes to Cleveland or Pittsburgh, my mom said that she will go with me. And I think like she might not make it through the set because she actually, way to go out. she actually killed by comedy. Right. But she actually watched the full stand up before I did. And she said, she came in the next morning to watch the kids and she looked at me and she just said, he's fucking wrong. That's all she said. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Brent, there's nothing, there's few things in life as much fun as watching something funny with your mom. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she has a great laugh. Yeah. Like she, and like she has a good sense of humor, obviously, cause you have a good right. sense of humor. Very dry. Yeah. Like very like. Oh yeah. I come by it naturally. Yeah. And your dad too was just the, the, his sense of humor was great. I mean, like you come from parents with really good senses of hearing but your mom if we would watch something funny your mom was like somebody i almost felt like she was like a like a jedi of humor <laughs> she really took it very seriously though like i remember watching funny things with her and she just like wouldn't laugh and i feel like uh, it's almost really like i because my mom is a good like she appreciates humor and i and this is why i like appreciate snl because my mom loved snl so much and Things like that. But watching your mom do that was always just like funny to me because it was like an observation of like humor because, you know, older than my mom, not like a lot yeah. older, but just a different age. Do room, But like at that, you know, I don't know how old your mom is, but it's a, a gap between my mom and your mom. And I'll never say, <laughs> I'll never say. It's just a gap. But your mom's humor level was always just so funny to me. And your mom would crack me up so much yeah with just like offhanded co- like things like your mom never made fun of me right you know in a, in a bad you know like, of no 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 what i mean is like <laughs> oh yeah yeah, made yeah fun of me in a way that like i i mean i can't be offended anyhow like unless right. you literally come at my mom or come at jamie yeah, and i right, can't be offended right, right but your mom knows how to slip in a joke yeah yeah by just yeah. smoking a cigarette and then saying something right and you're just like well that was aggressive lois and that's like one of those great traits like she's slipping in and then she's just like gone like a ghost (laughs) and that was uh, a future guest yeah future guest both our moms future guests coming on yep that'll be that'll be something but look let's we've got we've got a big show it was fun we got we got five we have five things to uh get through here we got two movies uh, we have uh, three TV shows, a series review, and um, our weekly Miss Marvel and Obi Wan. But yes. we begin with Jurassic World Dominion. Four years after the destruction of Ela Nublar, dinosaurs now live and hunt alongside humans all over the world. This fragile balance will reshape the future. And determine once and for all whether human beings are to remain the apex predators on the planet they now share with history's most fearsome creatures in a new Lucas. era oh. starring Christopher Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, Laura Dern, Sam Neill, DeWanda Wise, Mamadou Athi, Isabella Sermon with 
the incomparable Jeff Goldblum, and as always, B.D. Wong. Yes. Um, thoughts? Okay, so... This is how I leave this movie. This is what I'll... I'll do it this way. I'll, I will ask a bunch of questions and then answer them myself. Um... Did I have low expectations for this movie? Yes. Uh, was I excited about this movie? Actually, not really. You, were ex- was, you weren't excited? You were I was not excited. Um, I did not like the second one of the series at all, really. Like, it, was yeah. just, it didn't do much for The first one I thought was really good. I actually thought the first one was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, did I have any idea what this movie is going to be about? No. Dinosaurs. Well, you hoped it was about dinosaurs, but... Ha ha. But ha ha. Um, was I expecting Locust to be the main theme of this movie? No, because it wasn't set in Cleveland during the summer. Midges. So, Those are midges. Okay. Same thing. They're Same not. Thing. They're not. Same thing. They're, it's not in the summer. Okay. It's not in the summer. It's an unseasonably warm falls. Um, that's all that made me think of. It was literally what I thought about. Like, literally a second, this was the thing. I was like, I just remember just seeing pictures, just Java like Chamberlain, Java Chamberlain, just like yep. wiping the midges away. And I was like, Oh my God, yep. this is Jurassic. This is Jurassic world dominion. Yeah. I was losing my mind over that. Um, did Jurassic Jay and I, Cleveland. did Janie and I laugh at parts where only the two of us were laughing and everyone else was like scared or freaked out many times, uncountable amount of times. We laughed at things that we just went hilarious about. Was this movie about dinosaurs? No. Not really. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Not um, really. Oh, was this an action movie? Sort of. Sort of. Um, so I came out of this and like I did the pose, and you can like I like I yeah. I, I got two, two thumbs, thumbs up. up. Yeah. But because yeah. I'm just doing the thing, but I don't yeah. I don't even know. This is kind of where I'm at because like okay, yeah. Because okay. I was like, <laughs> this is the thing, like I had a lot of fun. Like we had a great time because it's like this movie was so fucking crazy <laughs> like it just wasn't it wasn't good from the beginning like the news report at the beginning was so cheesy and i'm like this is and i like look over at you I'm like this is great and it's like somebody might have heard me and be like does he actually think this is great like it's like no because it's like does is dumb like we're already off to the races on the stupidity of it it's like dinosaurs will they take and you're like oh this is going to be a dinosaur movie like you're like because it's jurassic park you're like this is a dinosaur movie in jurassic park the original movie is one of the all-time great movies i mean just 100 like will not deny that and like i said i thought the first movie of this series was actually very good good too yep um i agree thoroughly enjoyed it and then this movie just doesn't make any sense which i love and it actually brought me back right Remember when blockbusters in the summer just didn't make any sense, but they made hundreds of millions of dollars because it was just like fireworks. And it was like, this is a movie that if this happened in 1997 makes, you know, whatever the, it, it's the most, it's the biggest money maker of the, of the year. It gets average reviews. It's just movies not getting average. It's getting below average reviews yeah. or whatever, because everyone's just judging off of everything else. But like, it doesn't matter. Like you don't, you never factor in these movies beyond anything and then when you see them. And so this was so funny to me. Like uh, my favorite scene in this movie mm-hmm. is when the dinosaur is on the like plane and then the bike takes them out. JD, I, I lost it. I wish I could have paused the movie right there because I was laughing so hard at how stupid that was. And then I had this like visual in my head. I was like, I hope the dinosaur lands on the motorcycle on the land and just like starts cruising along on the motorcycle. That's what I was hoping. Cause like, that's where this movie was at. Where it's like, maybe they'll show a scene of this dinosaur on a motorcycle, just cruising along the land. It's crazy. I mean, the plot is it's locusts taking over. It's people backstabbing people. It's it, it literally doesn't matter. Honestly, like whatever we say, won't spoil it for you. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, I think it might be the craziest movie I've watched in a long time based on like, it's there's nothing going on, but I had a great time. Like I, yeah. I absolutely had a fantastic time because I just wanted more stupid shit to happen. It, the more stupid shit to happen. It was great. 
Um, um, it was. It made. It's so far. It's made five hundred million. Yeah, it's um, crushing worldwide. So that's yeah. that's worldwide. Um, worldwide. I don't I, like. I can remember scenes. So I saw it on Sunday. Okay, so it's been yeah. You know. So Tuesday. I can remember scenes, but I could not tell you anything about this movie. No, nobody can. People I, in it can't tell you. <laughs> to be fair, like Sam Neill doesn't even know like what fucking movie he's in anymore. Like he no. he he did Thor Ragnarok, and he didn't even know he was in Thor Ragnarok. Nope. Like that's not even like that's, that's like act- verbatim. I think that 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 he has said that. Um, or at the very least, he was just like, I don't know what's happening here. And right. he'll be back for uh, Love and Thunder. So that's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, actually trying to make sense of this a little bit. I thought that when you bring back, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to compare this to Ghostbusters Afterlife. Okay. Okay. Ghostbusters Afterlife. And Top Gun, Maverick, very tastefully brought back old characters. I mean, you can't make a Top <laughs> right. Gun movie without Tom Cruise, but right. Ghostbusters, very. I'd argue you should make most movies without Tom Cruise. Can we not? <laughs> we want to. We want to try to keep the time on this one down. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ghostbusters very tastefully reused, you know, Ackroyd and Murray and everything. And it didn't steal anything from the main <laughs> plot. And part of the reason why was because they were left till the very end. Paul Rudd was doing himself as he does. McKenna Grace was awesome. Uh, so on and so forth. As soon as Laura Dern, Samuel, and Jeff Goldblum were on screen, I didn't give a shit about Chris Pratt anymore. No. And I think that that speaks to how powerful the original Jurassic Park movie was was and like you said iconic if you put it if you made a list of like the most important movies of all time it probably lands in the top 10 and i don't even think it's probably i think it is one yeah, of the most important I, movies of all I th- time yeah. i really do 100 percent top so, i would put it in top five for me actually uh, important favorite blah 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 different important things. important important know. yeah yeah top top 10 i don't know about top five but I just didn't care anymore. And like the plot didn't make sure. any friggin' sense anyway. With no, them. No, no, no. You know what I mean? And so like they, it, it was almost like, you know, they're the stars of this trilogy and they completely took a backseat. And I, you know, I, 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 as we're talking and everything and we're leaving the theater, Melissa said, what'd you think? You know, I said, my, my number one thought leaving this movie is that I can only hope to one day be as cool as Jeff Goldblum. Like that was it. That's the only thing that was my thoughts on the movie. I, have I told my story on here about seeing Jeff seeing Goldblum? Him? Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. I always think about that every time. Now I just think about that and uh, he's just, right. He's you know, so cool. It, apartment. So I was expecting an apartment.com commercial. That was disappointed. I didn't get that, but yeah, it happens. he's just, uh, he's reached the point in his career that he's just get Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. And anything he's in, which is completely fine. He's also just always been Jeff Goldblum and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I and and I I will say there were like nice callbacks, like when he had the shirt unbuttoned. Yeah. And you know, some of the other things, but it it just I think honestly, the biggest mistake that this movie made was we joked and said this wasn't a movie about dinosaurs, but the biggest mistake that they made was they they continue to use this formula of it's people and they're trapped in something with dinosaurs and they have to figure out a way to get out but the dinosaurs can't get out so it's just they have to figure out a way to get out and the problem with that is how like we joked you know locust cleveland Jurassic park cleveland how much more fun would it have been if they had to figure out a way to stop dinosaurs from just freaking tearing cleveland apart well that was the thing like to be in the movie set you up with this where like dinosaurs yeah. like throwing cars off the road and stuff and it was just like right i didn't i didn't think this deep about it in the movie because i was just like honestly i said i had a good time watching this movie because it's so stupid 
Right. And like, sometimes you need that, but it's like, if you actually like critically think about this, which I don't know if we should, you know, it's one of those things, but it's just like, if this was a movie where it's just like, we have to stop them from like tearing down New York. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a better dinosaurs movie. in the world. Like that's what they set right. you up for. That's what they set you up with. The and then it's literally not the world at all. It's just, just one spot. The and same thing. In yeah. the middle of nowhere that nobody cares about. And right. And with like this crazy guy society I, and then it had like generic generic uh evil steve jobs well and, this is how i compared him in my brain i haven't said this out loud because i wanted to say it for the podcast it's as if steve jobs grew up to be mark zuckerberg and i know that sounds weird but it's the way it was it's like it's, it's yeah. a person like steve jobs who only had good intentions yeah grew up to be mark zuckerberg who like we don't know what his intentions are right. that was sure. literally the guy and yeah. it was like it was freaking me out. And I like to call back to the Barbasol can with the Wayne. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. The spitters and everything. And I, I really disliked the fact that B.D. Wong's character got like a mini redemption arc, because yeah. I swear to God, no Jurassic Park movie aside from this one has an ending other than him sneaking off with dinosaur embryos. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just, and like all of a sudden now he's a good guy. I didn't really buy that. I know in the book that character dies. So the fact that his character and, you know, spoilers for a 30 year old novel, but it's older than that, bro. It's older than us, I think. It's not. It's it's close to our age. It's close to our age. It's an old book. I know we talked about it at some point. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That was weird. I mean, it was just like, I don't know. I, I think what needs to happen is like we need to just end Jurassic Park. 1990. Okay. Okay. The, so 30, 32 year. Not quite 32. Um, it was November 20. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought it was older than that for, but whatever. I am. My yeah. friends was just around for a long time. I am. Yeah. It, we just need to either end it or like figure it out. Well, Take, I think it, at this point they've said this trilogy is This over, is it. This is which done. Is this is good. done with that. And if yeah. they roll something out, I would like them to maybe. And that was the thing. Like, it, it seemed to follow the same arc as the original trilogy, where the first one's good, the second one's not super great, and then the third one's just laughably bad. Right. And so, you know, they took a lot of time between Jurassic Park three and Jurassic World, and I think that that's something that they need to do again. Just okay. refresh it go back to the drawing board and honestly like i think the reason why jurassic park and jurassic world work so well is because they're they're just contained and i think that by expanding it to the whole world they they couldn't figure out a way to curate that and so then they just keep hammering it down into well they're you're in this area yeah it's like well that's not what you set us up for i mean right you know and i will say too The dinosaurs looked bad. Uh, They did look bad. Like a lot of them, when they were, the scene where they were trying to escape like that cave and they were just using shots, I bet you those were practical effects and they looked bad. They were not good. So Jurassic I thought they were like, I honestly thought they were like animatronic. That's what, yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I, yeah. That's what I thought in the movie. I thought they were fake and I was like, they're just trying to scare people. That's what I mean. It's like, I felt like because the original Jurassic Park, there weren't there was no CGI, and so that was all animatronics and practical effects. They looked awesome. Those dinosaurs looked better than the ones in this movie. So, so there's so what are we rating this? What are we cool, rating this? Yeah, I can't give this anything higher than a four. I was gonna give it a five. Yeah, I was gonna give it a five. It's, it's it was rough. just like because I was entertained. Yeah, because like be, but because it was bad. I don't know. Here's my like, thing. Here's I laugh I'm gonna give so it. much at stupid things. Like when the fucking locust was on fire in the sky, yeah. Janie and I were like losing our minds because it was like, this is so dumb. Right. And so like, it's a movie. Janie says she would rewatch plane. it again in the theaters because it's so bad. And it's like, that's kind of the thing. Like, I think this goes down maybe 10 years from now. It's like one of those like cult movies. I think it's a cult movie know. for being bad, for being bad know. where people like, dress up as like fire locusts and shit because it's so it's not a dinosaur movie and this know. whole fucking thing has always been about dinosaurs i don't understand how they crashed the plane in the ice no and they got knows. out of plane they got out of the plane nary a scratch to be found on either character well, sure not even not even the most well he is star lord 
is she? I mean, there's not, they didn't have like not even a rug. No, I know. I know. And he just gets out and strikes an action pose, like an action yeah. guy pose. I was just like, it was funny. It was like, we made fun this. of like before Uncharted came out, like there right. was all the things about uh, Tom them Holland. just yeah. Tom Holland just doing like action poses. And like, I don't even remember the action poses in that movie. This movie was nothing but action poses. Uncharted was significantly better than this movie. Oh my god, it was significantly it's not even better. Close. Not it's even really close not. to me. No, it's crazy. No, it's, yeah, yeah. So four point five out of ten. I recommend it if you just want to laugh. I mean, if you're a fan of the series, I think there's enough Easter eggs and callbacks. Yeah, and yeah. and Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum like make this watchable they're good they're good yeah they're themselves i mean they're the characters you know what i mean yep. they don't miss a beat it's just no. the the writing in this there's movie no plot and is it's atrocious. ridiculous yeah it's bad so our next movie of the night is a uh, hustle a basketball scout discovers a phenomenal street ball player while in spain and sees the prospect as his opportunity to get back into the NBA, starring Adam Sandler, Queen Latifah, Ben Foster, uh, Juancho Hernan Gomez, uh, as Bo Cruz, uh, some other, a uh, lot of other uh, NBA talent, uh, Jaleel White, um, Robert Duvall make cameo appearances. Um, hustle. Yeah, so it, like like you said, a lot of NBA players playing. Uh, one short moment ago, and plays for the Utah Jazz. And I mean, the thing about this movie that I think, you know, to set this up is that it's showing how hard it is to get into the NBA, like how hard that training is, all those things, and what it goes through. And it also showcases Adam Sandler as, once again, a great actor. I think this is one of those things where – you know, he gets underrated for doing his movies that he does because they're funny or whatever. But if you see Uncut Gems, um, and you've seen Blue, um, why am I losing track of the uh, all Thomas Anderson movie he was in? Uh, that's also very good. And, and so it's just like, he's a really good actor. And to go into this movie where he's playing this, you know, significant role, Queen Latifah is his wife. Uh, Ben Foster is the foil to him uh, in the Philadelphia 76ers organization. And for me with this movie, it was just like, wow, it's really hard to be a professional athlete, which we all kind of knew, but like, we didn't know how hard it was. And then I looked up at Juancho Herman Gomez's numbers with the Utah Jazz. Yeah. And you're watching <laughs> this guy run these hills. And I know this is a movie and like things are exaggerated, but they're uncut scenes of him just shooting threes and making like 10 in a row. And you're like, Oh, okay. Like that's insane to watch a you know, player do that. And he averaged 10 points a game for the jazz. Mm -hmm. And so he's, you know, obviously just an average NBA player. Like he, was not, round, he was a first round. Draft he was a first round pick. He was a first yeah. round pick, but at this point he ends up being a, you know, an average NBA player that is like mm -hmm. a good player on his team, but obviously not a Steph Curry. Yeah, sorry. He's, no, he's no all star. He's no all star. And it's just like, but that's how hard he worked to be an average NBA player. And that's what I thought was really cool about this movie was to show that, like, other things, and we'll get into it, but like, that, that was my main thing was like, A, I would just, I, I, I sent a text to you guys. Uh, like, I would love to just have a personal trainer and just get after it. Like, that's just a thing for me. Whereas, like, if I could just go hard getting after it and just, you know, have a good time that would be amazing just to have that kind of thing where like, let's get up at four to three, five. You're going to run these hills. You're going to eat these foods. You're going to do all this stuff. So I thought that was really cool. And they get the NBA players involved. And yeah. I thought that was really cool. And like, you know, obviously like NBA players will do movies and it doesn't really matter. Like a lot of times, but for so many to get involved and for so many to actually take this seriously, I thought it was a really cool aspect of this movie. Mm -hmm. I also thought it just actually does basketball movies are usually bad in the basketball end of things um, on the basketball yeah. end of things, you know, as much as I love Hoosiers, that movie's awesome. The basketball is really weird because they just well, play the same clip a lot. And it's old too. And, it's old, but yeah. it just, I mean, it's like, that's a We're great, gonna great run movie. The picket fence. Yeah. Yeah. But this movie like actually showed basketball being basketball. 
and yeah. without a lot of extra stuff it was you know and then the storylines behind it were good but it was more important about like this guy's just trying to be an nba player and his family matters and adam sandley's adam sandler's family matters but this was more about like how hard it becomes it is to be like a professional athlete. And I think that's like taking for granted a lot of times because we don't, we're not going out there seeing 95 mile per hour. You know, we're playing high school baseball. We're seeing, you know, 80 mile per hour pitches are hard to hit, but nothing, they're not moving or anything. You're scared you're going to hit stuff like that. And it's like, you know, I come away from a day where I almost saw Tyler Anderson throw no hitter against the angels and the angels are bad now. But they also have Shohei Otani and Mike Trout, and he almost threw a no hitter against him. Otani broke it up. It was just like professional sports are really hard to play and to showcase it in a way that this movie did. I thought was really important in that way of like, there's a reason why only like 05 percent of people become professional athletes, and that's what made it cool. Yeah, I thought uh, honestly <clears throat> when you sent me the trailer uh, for it. Uh, a couple weeks ago or whatever i like glanced at it and i was like i don't really want to watch this i don't <laughs> i don't buy adam sandler like i don't i don't like adam sandler too too much anymore i mean i, <laughs> I don't know of an adam sandler movie that i saw literally after happy gilmore that i was like i like this and i was so surprised by how much i liked this movie <clears throat> I don't think I, I don't think, I don't think once I got going that I picked my phone up once and that's really saying something in this day and age. And I was very, I was very captivated by uh, Juancho Hernan Gomez. I thought he played that role pretty well. Uh, it's not, sure. I don't think it's easy for an athlete to be believable in a movie. I mean, we saw it with space jam with LeBron. It was, right, that was right. not, not good. Um, or even going back to the original space, you know, with Michael, but those guys are usually regulated towards cameo type things. Right. And even right. what some of the other guys did, uh, Anthony Edwards playing kind of the main foil to Bo Cruz, uh, believable, you know what I mean? Just sure. from a trash talking standpoint and all that, but like, you know, the other guys that got into it, they're really just playing themselves, but I, I can't think of another movie outside of He Got Game where an athlete plays the role and plays it believably. And so uh, kudos to him. I mean, I hope he, you know, continues to develop in the NBA and, and stuff because that's obviously his goal. But, you know, I thought he did a wonderful job. I thought Adam Sandler was believable as this sort of scout turned coach turned, you know, personal trainer. Um, Kenny Smith was you know bouncing around doing he wasn't kenny smith he was basically kind of like an approximation of kenny smith realistically but right. yeah i really i actually i was surprised that i enjoyed this movie as much as i did because going into it i was like i don't think i'm gonna like this but i was very pleasantly surprised and i would certainly recommend this to anyone who is any a sports fan absolutely recommend this sure yeah, and just like before we wrap this up, Punch Drunk Love is the movie I was thinking of with Paul Thomas Anderson. Okay. I'm saying it's a great movie. Yeah, I was looking at his then, IMDb. I yeah, think. at Punch Drunk Love, and then I would also recommend Uncut Gems as Adam Sandler movies. I mean, he is great in both those movies. He's great. I like. I like him in other movies too. I really do. Like, I like his silly movies. But if you're looking for just him being really good and stuff, um, he's yeah. like it, that's where he showcases it. It, it he's one of those things where, like why do a hard movie you can do an easy movie and make a bunch of money and yeah but yeah um yeah, i didn't hate i'll tell you what the first yeah. grown-ups movie i thought was decent the oh, second the one was yeah. not the, first, the second, second one one's not good bad. yeah the second one's bad first one's not bad so um what would you rate this bring uh i'd give it a solid mm, 7.5 8 literally what i was gonna do 7.5 yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i liked it like i said for sports fans absolutely recommend absolutely recommend. sure if you're not janie yeah. loved it she loved yeah. it and yeah. she's not as you know she likes sports a degree she also just like did not know obviously why would she know who wancho her my gomez is and yeah. i told her he plays for the jazz and she's like cool like she just saw he was good at doing what he was doing it's like that's solid for him so yeah yeah yeah, it was it was good and and I would recommend it for sure. 
Okay, we're going to move on now to, uh, and we are a little bit, we're a little bit late on that, but that's on this, but that's okay. Under the Banner of Heaven, uh, which was an FX series, and it is based on the uh, novel of the same name, which is based on the true events of um, of this story that took place in the 1980s. A devout detective's faith is tested as he investigates a brutal murder seemingly connected to an esteemed Utah family spiral into Latter-day Saints fundamentalism and their distrust in the government starring... Andrew Garfield, Sam Worthington, Daisy Edgar Jones, Denise Gao, uh, Wyatt Russell, Billy Howell, and Gil Birmingham. So this was um, this was an FX stream. You can stream it on Hulu. Uh, that's where I watched it. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're a little late on this, which is my fault. Uh, yeah, I yeah, but um perfectly cast oh yeah, my god agreed. like agreed. one of those shows where you're like every single person is literally where they should be in this mm-hmm. um andrew garfield i think i i think this is a point where we have to just say andrew garfield is one of our great actors i think we just have to say this at this point like he's one of the great actors of of this generation of this generation and uh because he can do a lot of different things he can do it well uh and this was a showcase for him. And I also was just like, everybody else is cast. Why Russell is so good at what yeah. he does. Everybody's so good at what they do. And then to kind of break this down, it's everyone thinks this is weird. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be, everyone thinks that this religion is. Cultish. Okay. So it's about, yeah, it's about the Mormons. Yeah. So let's about just the Mormons. put right. that out there. And yeah. this is a thing that, that took place in the eighties with the Lafferty family, who were kind of like considered the Kennedys of Utah. Yes. And they just go completely off. Well, not, not all of them, but it's sort of, it's spearheaded by uh, Dan, who is played by Wyatt Russell and uh, Ron, who's played by Sam Worthington. Uh, And they just, the two of them really just, they just go off the reservation and they get into you know, quote unquote fundamentalists and like the history. And it, it was interesting to see kind of how the, they incorporated the history of like, like Joseph Smith and Brigham Young and all of that into the show to sort of flesh out the backstory of, of all this. And I, I'll tell you honestly, who I thought maybe gave the best performance, uh, which was Billy Howell. Uh, oh yeah. Cause Alan, yeah. the husband of, of, the uh the victims um his wife brenda and their i think it's 15 month old daughter yep the the murder in itself was just fucked up i mean (laughs) so that's and it was yeah i mean this was and what did we say we were talking about miss marvel last week and we we said it's hard to shift gears Right. When you are watching things like Tokyo Vice and We Own This City and Under the Banner of Heaven and even Obi Wan's, it's not super lighthearted, you know what I mean? No. I mean? As far as as far as Star Wars stuff goes, but and then to turn on Miss Marvel and it's just like there's colors and pop music and everything. But getting back to this show, I agree with you. Perfectly cast in every single role yeah and garfield was pretty incredible in this you can see the empathy that he wears mm-hmm. throughout this series and as he's starting to put things together that sort of thing um but yeah really really great show really interesting subject matter and, right uh, oh yeah yeah it was just it was interesting it was something i don't know a lot about too right. you know what i mean yeah. like you you hear about like byu quarterbacks you know and i know it sounds weird to say for us but it's just like 
we're, you know, we are sports people and you hear about things like this, but to really dig deep into that religion, it's like, Mm -hmm. obviously not everyone's like that in that religion, just like anything, but there are the people like any religion where they go to the extreme. Yeah. And this is that extreme account of that. And to me, it was just like, this is, this is a good way to look at this. And also like a good way to look at just cults. I think all of us like looking at cults. Mm -hmm. I really do think that's a thing where it's like, you put a cult movie up and like, we're all in on it. And like, this was that. And it was just like, oh, let's just cover up this murder. And like, let's make it not a thing. Like, like they literally looked at it as like, it wasn't a thing. And I thought that was really an interesting and intriguing way of doing this. And like John Krakauer, if you've read other books by him, like he really goes dig, he digs deep into his books. And like, I, it makes me want to go and read this book. I have not read this book, but I really want to dig because you know that book's something even further and probably creepier than what things are. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, I think that this, you know, it, 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 it does show how this, I, and I don't know anyone of this particular faith. And and it's funny in a sense because like South Park's made the jokes like, oh, they were right all along and stuff like that. Right. And there's things like Mormons came from Mars and Mars and stuff. It, it shows, I think it paints the, I think it paints the religion, like you said, number one in almost a cultish light. But I also think it paints it very, in a very backwards like right. because you know the men are so domineering and the women are just their their servants and all these different things and you can see as as the series wears on Garfield's character Jeb Pyrie sort of starting to question all of this and question right. his own faith which is I mean, we've we've talked about the the fact that like as far as movies and stories goes, you can really only tell seven stories, you know, seven different right. stories. And the I Shakespeare, think that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that the man grappling with his face is with his faith is sort of the man versus self sort of thing. Is it can be really powerful when done right. And I thought that I thought that this was done uh, very well. The casting was great. The writing was great. Um, you know, there were. It's the only thing that I would say is that it's kind of a hard watch. Oh, it's definitely a hard watch. Yeah. The episodes are all over an hour long. And the subject matter is is really heavy. This isn't something that I would tell somebody to watch. <laughs> There's no right. funny moments. There's no funny moments in this show. Very I, few. Like, it's, yeah. Very little levity. And it usually comes from uh, Gil Birmingham's character who is... Um, Garfield's partner, uh, right, detective, right, right. who's a Paiute Indian, um, Native American, um, Bill Taba. And it, usually any levity comes from that character. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a heavy, it's heavy. I think that this is even like, this is even heavier than we own the city. And I think it's partly because of who the victims were and how brutal the murders were. Cause they said right. they almost decapitated the baby. Right. So right. that's it's freaking insanity. I don't, the other thing is I don't, and unless I was just like nodding off or missed it, I don't believe that they specifically said like what happened to um, Dan and Ron. Yeah. They didn't really specifically go into it. Yeah. Uh, after the, the um um dan is currently serving life sentence uh there's there's um pictures of them and i think that uh wyatt russell was the perfect choice to play dan lafferty um let's see here uh i'm just trying to see if i can get dan said he closed his eyes when murdering the baby because he didn't feel anything oh whoa that's that's heavy. that's real heavy yeah um uh, they couldn't come they couldn't come it was a 10-2 split on whether he should get the death penalty 
So he's serving back-to-back life sentences. Mm. Um, and then, uh, and he get, he was given the death penalty. Yeah. That's he crazy. would have been, he chose, this, this is how crazy Utah is. I, I swear to you, there's, it's still the wild west. He chose to be executed by firing squad, but died of natural causes in 2019 of, of that is Utah. I think it's the only state where that's still legal. Fire. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. What a wild, what a wild thing. But anyway, uh, where would you land on this for a rating? 8.5. It's really good. It's a great. Yeah, show. I'd probably give it an eight. Yeah. 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 I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nastier when it comes to this. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a tougher, I'm a tougher grader. <laughs> Moving on to another show that this week provided a warning that some of the images depicted within may be unsettling to some viewers. Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, this week's episode, Obi-Wan and the rest of his band of resistance type folks, that's not a rebellion yet, but they're resistance type folks, are trapped in a hangar as the empire bombards the door and then comes rushing in to try to capture Mr. Mr. Kenobi. Uh, We get some character development for the third sister as we find out what her true motivations are. And then towards the end of the episode, when Obi-Wan is getting ready to escape, we see this, this Darth Vader gentleman who comes in and does some stuff. He's I'll tell you what, this 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 Darth Vader guy, he is a he is something, isn't he? Yeah, he could be a star. He he, he is something. This character, I I mean, whew, what a guy. Uh and then the third sister uh, attempts to execute her plan by by fighting him. Needless to say, it doesn't go super well for her. <laughs> no. uh, and the Grand Inquisitor, the original Grand Inquisitor, shows back up and they leave her for dead as Kenobi slips away. However, she recovers the transponder from Bail Organa to Obi-Wan and learns of the boy on Tatooine. So my assumption is that the sixth episode will, in fact, take place on Tatooine, which it is an area that is so little used in Star yeah. Wars. I knew I had to double check where Tatooine fell in the Star Wars universe. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Not not used a lot. Not used a lot. That that particular place. (laughs) I'll be honest with you. I'm surprised that they've been off there so much. Yeah. In uh, in that show. Good for Uh, that. What did you think of this episode? Um, Still not as good as episode three. Because I still think episode three is maybe the best mm. of all these shows. I, sh- I should but. say, uh, I should say that additionally, we got uh, Anakin, young Anakin, digitally, we, oh, yeah, yeah digitally DH yeah. Hayden <laughs> in a lightsaber battle that was shown throughout the episode as kind yeah, of, yeah, which is cool. Their way, their conduit for sort of talking mm-hmm. to each other. So. Right, and they also like the way of to like decide like how the battles would work out and everything right. like that. Um, yeah. yep. uh, it was still really good. I thought this episode was really good. The third episode was just so good to me that you're saying you think you think that the third episode was the best of all Star Wars episodes so far, or uh, just of Obi Wan? Of Obi Wan, I'm sorry. Okay. Of Obi Wan. Of Obi Wan, I'm sorry. Of the it was of better than this anything series. in Boba Fett. And definitely better than Boba Fett. I mean, Mandalorian yeah. is just such a different... It's a whole other level. It's a whole different thing. And it's like, I still think this series is very good and not mm-hmm. like, you know, VS, uh, you know, Mandalorian, but it's very good. It's very good. Um, what I liked about this was Darth Vader. And what I didn't like was all <laughs> the other stuff. Everything really, honestly, it, was like, yeah. it was like one of those things where it's just like, and that's what made third episode so good is it was you cared about both things. In this yeah. episode, you just kind of cared about Darth Vader. Yeah. And the show, I believe, is called Obi Wan Kenobi and not called Darth Vader. And like, I literally didn't care about Obi Wan Kenobi. I thought the episode was good. Yeah. 
because all I was like, let's, I, th- every single time Darth Vader comes, like, can he just crush through people? Like, that's all I wanted. Like, I was just like, give us that scene that we all know where he just mm. crushes through everyone. And like, when he thought the third sister, like, it was just like, he was lazy about it. Like, he didn't even care. Yeah. It was like Jordan playing the Hornets or something in the nineties. You know, it's just like, I'll put up 30. It's going to be a nothing night for me. Don't worry about Larry Johnson. Like you can't guard me. Like, you know, you got your grandma Ma commercials. I'm Michael fucking Jordan, you know? And like, that's what it felt like. It literally is what it felt like. It was like Jordan playing the Hornets. It was just like, I don't care. Like I'm going to beat you no matter what it does. It literally doesn't matter. And it was, that's how I felt about this was like, the Darth Vader stuff was cool. And like, you knew, and I like the backstabbing, all that stuff, like, or like the mind games. That was cool. Like, but we all know where this is going. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that is what hurts this show. But that's not the fall of the show. It's like, or it is the fall of the show. It's one of those yeah. things where like, we know that it ends with a battle between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, but we also know that neither one of them dies. Right. The only thing we know is that Obi-Wan is gone from existence and they don't think he exists anymore when we get to episode one. That's the four. only thing we episode really four. know. Episode four. Episode, I'm sorry, episode yeah. four. I'm sorry, episode four. <clears throat> the first movie, episode four. four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try explaining that to a seven-year-old. <laughs> yeah, the the first movie of the Star Wars movies, yeah. but episode a four. New yeah. A New, a new hope, hope, where Luke Skywalker has no idea what the fuck's going on. Right. Obi Wan is not someone that anyone worries about. Right, he's just like a crazy old exists. wizard. Yeah, he's a yeah. crazy old wizard, and it's basically like a Harry Potter movie. It like, <laughs> you know, it is. Calm it's down. Like, <laughs> it is oh, no. I mean, like, the down. beginning of the beginning of it is kind of like a Harry. If you go back and watch A New Hope, it is kind of just like, what the hell is going on here? Like, I can't even imagine watching this like an eight year old <laughs> and then being like this is one of the greatest things you'll ever watch in your life. And they're like, what's going on? Like, like I don't, I don't really like, know what's going on either. It's, it's new. It's awesome. But yeah, I mean, you watching it now, kid, you just know. So it's hard. Right, to like, but, you know what I mean? But you just feel like, you just want to tell every kid you ever like, wait for the empire strikes back. Wait, wait for that one. So <laughs> back on, back on, this, back on this. Yeah. 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 Um, I do think that, part of the issue here is in fact that no matter how high they they try to make the stakes they're just not going to be that high because we know you know what i mean and so like even as she's like revealing her plan of i'm not hunting you i'm hunting him and this is how it's going to go in my head i'm just thinking well what's she going to do and how's he going to stop her because that's what's going to happen you know what i mean and I think that they, so what they can do with Vader is they can just show you how powerful he is. And this is kind of like, like you said, it's, it's called Obi-Wan Kenobi, but it, like this episode was geared around giving a little bit more story context to Rava, the third sister, and also... Like, we're just going to show you how powerful Vader is. He force pulls a starship out of the air and then breaks it in half in a whim. And then when she tries to attack him, he just uses the force to easily dispatch her. Right, right. You know, like you said, I would almost say that it's not even Michael Jordan against the Hornets because Hornets were at least like a playoff team. This was like, this was like, Michael Jordan against the Timberwolves and the Timberwolves best player was Tom Gugliotta, which is about as deep as deep a cut as it gets, but sure. Yeah. It's just, but that's the thing is they know, you know, the people who wrote this and, and the people who produce the show, they know what we want to see and they want right, and right, what right. that is, is Darth Vader doing cool shit like that. And so that's where we're kind of at with this series. And now it's just, how does the final showdown go basically? So that's kind of where we're at. And I think, you know, going into, I like, I will say that 
now that both shows are coming out in, on the same day, this and Miss Marvel, I watched Miss Marvel first because that's like the under, that's same. the undercard, yeah. right? And then Obi Wan's the main event. So oh, yeah. I'm excited to see how this wraps up, but I just don't think, like you said, it's not the fault of the show, but it is the fault of the show. How this concludes in a way that's going to be compelling. And this is my final point. Just like, what do we do going forward, Star Wars? Well, did you see the quote about uh, uh, the Taika Waititi movie? That he no, said? I didn't actually. Yeah, see that he quote. he no. said he's like all new characters. None of it's going to touch Skywalker's, and it's going to expand the universe. That's what we need to do. It's right. just like we have to go somewhere else because, as much as I like, if we keep bringing back Skywalker's, it's never going to go anywhere. Right. Right. I love and that. I, I hope that's what happens. I mean, I hope yeah. that's what happens. Because I love when we get into things that aren't this, it makes sense. And it's like, even if they slightly connect, sure. That's okay. But as long as it's not Skywalker. Because even, you know, even Mandalorian now is right in, in on that. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, but yeah. Rogue One was, but it wasn't. It was like right. one of those things where it's like it was so in the middle where it didn't really matter. And it's like that movie was to me really good. And yeah, it's it's yeah. the only movie I put Rogue One ahead of Jedi. And for sure. me, it's it's Empire, a New Hope, Rogue One, Jedi, and then everything else after that. Sure. And I think like I, I need to go back and I mean I, I probably will this summer just because I have time to do it, but like it's just weird to me. I, I, I think, well, that's exactly what you're saying, though, is why Andor has potential. Right, right, right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so one more yeah. episode. One more episode, and we'll see. It's, oh, it's gone so fast, you know? It has. Yeah, that's what she said. Okay, Miss Marvel. Episode two Kamala and Bruno explore the source of her newfound powers just in time for a perilous new adventure greg miss marvel um i don't <laughs> really like this show um it's really like i like the music because then it like, kind of harkens back to like the era we grew up but I, like there's nothing like this is a, a show that <clears throat> i really scroll my th- phone through and then when it ends, I'm like, oh, shit, that ended. And it's, yeah. it's just not that good. I, like, I hate this. I, I hate to be like that guy, but I just don't think it's good. I don't. I think this they tried is... to like fit something in there and there's nothing interesting about it. I don't care about any character in this show. Like there's not a single character I care about this. And then they're trying to make it like a, like an aughts kind of like drama sitcom show but it's not good enough it's like it doesn't do any of those things well enough it's not funny enough there's nothing i laugh about like there's things where i like i'll you know i watch the show by myself but i was like i'll i'll go like oh well and i'm not a tv writer but i'll be like oh if you would have done this instead of this this would have actually been funny and so i feel like you have like c tv writers writing this show and it just seemed bad and we talked about this being, you know, in between Doctor Strange and Thor, probably for a reason, because, yeah. you know, like Thor, you know, Doctor Strange was what, whatever it was. And Thor is probably going to be, I, for me, I think Thor is probably going to be awesome. I just really, I have really high expectations for this. And it was just like, I just don't think this show <clears throat> was meant to be anything. I think it was like, oh, we're going to get to Captain Marvel at some point probably at the very end and then that'll be a thing and this is the problem is like the young avengers suck in the comic books and they're gonna suck in the movies and that's just kind of where we're at it's just like the comic books of the young avengers are not good and they just aren't they're just very low rated comic books by a lot of people it, very boring and just it's not captain america it's not iron man it's not any of these characters that we relate to and also, they're all just teenagers, and it's like we all hate teenagers. And Spider-Man's that's a teenager. what Spider Man's a teenager. Spider Man's a teenager, but like he grows into being an adult. He's also just like smart, 
I think that's like the difference between Spider-Man 2 is like Spider-Man is actually so much smarter than everyone else. And that's what makes it different. So like everybody else is kind of just like, oh, I have powers. And then Spider-Man's like, I have powers. Let me see what I can just do with these. And it just, for me, this show just doesn't work. It just doesn't. Like I'm so bored by it. Like I don't think it's good. I just don't. Well, I, don't I think, think it's at this good. point, I think at this point, and we kind of touched on this a little bit last week, but this is the first show that is definitively not for us. No, it is. You know, it what just I mean? isn't for us. No, no, no. And there's this was, and you kind of talked about it. It's a younger girl. Um, it's a, it's the first Islamic character in the MCU. It just seems like they're trying to maybe cast the net a little bit and bring in some new uh, viewers. <clears throat> I will say, I found myself in the same position where I would be on my phone, and then all of a sudden something happened and if i was in that position in in an episode of like moon night which i wasn't because i was never on my phone right same i it would have been like oh shit i need to rewind but with this it's like probably doesn't matter and And i think that that to me is the biggest thing is like i just don't like I know it's not necessarily meant for us, but like, and it has nothing to do with like whoever the actress or whatever. I just don't think the show is interesting. I honestly mm. just don't, I don't, I, I would be interested to know what like younger people think about this. Cause I don't think there's anything to me yeah, sure. interesting about this show. I just don't, yeah. I don't think there's anything that makes it appealing because younger people love, I taught fifth graders and they love the Marvel universe. And, right. you know, I don't have them to talk to about this show right now, but it's like, do you think the show is good? They maybe think it's good because it has colors and action, yeah. but like, there's nothing going. Like, there's nothing. Well, there's nothing at stake. Like, yeah, and that's the thing that's kind of bothering me. It's <clears throat> like, and this is eleven episodes. Oh shit! <laughs> I hope this song <laughs> is in order. I think that this this show would be served it's too long with, episodes, with so it's fifty. Yeah. It, it would be served better with shorter episodes. This show yeah. should be no longer than 35 minutes. Yeah. And the problem is it's like 55 minutes. And it's just the characters aren't so. interesting enough to cover that much time. I am quite taken. Um, I will say I am quite taken with Kamala as a character because sure. <sighs> Oh my god, what was that? My yawn. Oh my, that was an aggressive yawn. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was good. No, that so was coming good. off of not getting to bed till like 1 30 last night. So yeah. Well happens. Me, it was good. It stalled for me to for a second to find the IMDP page. Uh Amon Milani. <laughs> I'm I'm quite taken with her as a character for a couple of reasons. She's comically unathletic, which I find to be very funny. Like, like un, maybe yeah, it's intentional, yeah. maybe it's not. But, you know, most of these characters that you think of as superheroes or whatever, they're, they're cut, they're chiseled, they're, you know, look at Black Widow, either one of them, look at Haley Steinfeld in the New Avengers, uh, right. Captain, look at Captain Marvel. They're all super fit and she like looks like a toddler scurrying across the rooftop at the end of the right, right, right. like that sequence so i found that to be like really funny in a like i said i don't know if it's it's meant to be that way but i think she's really cute i think that that character is is cute and very charming sure yeah but i, agree I with just that. think it's i i just think it's this like the story is just i'm just not with it yeah. and and like we said too part of it might be a headspace thing because we have watched so much stuff lately that's just super heavy and this is very lighthearted. right but we'll see and i just like you said also i don't think that there's um there's just nothing like the two cops or whatever they are like the chick from orange is the new black i just don't like who cares Right. You know what I mean? Like we we've we've been watching shows and movies where it's like multiverse and gods fighting gods, and you know, there's in the next movie it's gonna be Thor the god of thunder against Gore the god butcher, and now it's just like 
street level stuff. And I know that at large, you and I have talked about, we prefer the small scale stuff, but this just seems way too juvenile for me. And that's just yeah, me. Same. Maybe it's a me. It could be a me problem. It could be. I, I like, but I don't think it is right now. I really, I actually don't. I just think this show isn't good. I, I really just don't think it is because I think Marvel is one of those things where it's just like, we were this age when we weren't this age necessarily, but like when the first, how old would we have been when Iron Man came out? 22, 23. What was that eight, 2008? So yeah, been, depending on when it was, I was 23, 23 right? yeah, 23, 24. And it's like, I mean, like, I was yeah. so young and dumb, and it's like that movie was so good to me. And it's like, yeah. and it, that was good to 13 year olds. Then it's just like, I feel like I don't think you need to draw young people in, I think you just need to appeal to everyone when you're doing this. And it's like, this is the problem with this show, is I don't think it well, really yeah. appeals. I think that the problem with this show is the overall problem with the MCU, where it's just too big. And now yep. they're having to go so deep into the well to find new characters. Right. And some of them are going to work like Moon Knight and, right. you know, Kate Bishop and some of these other characters that we we've come across and some of them aren't. And right. I will say since the end of COVID where they've started kicking everything back up, most of the new stuff hasn't worked. Just being right. totally honest. Yeah. You know, Eternals was bad. Uh, what else? The America Chavez character wasn't super in- interesting in Doctor Strange. This hasn't been doing it. Moon Knight was good, but Moon Knight was barely was an thing. MC. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean? Thing. So that, yeah. that in and of itself is... So it's just, I think that <laughs> especially after we get through this run of Spider-Man Doctor Strange 4... Who, Black Panther's a wild card, and then you have Guardians right. Three. After that, it's crapshoot. And I think that this is this is the inflection point of this is going to start not being good anymore. Oh, well, I think this is. I think it's going to be more say, consistently bad than good. Sorry to cut you off. And, no, 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 that's fine. I think this is the thing where, like, show me how good you actually are doing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, like if you're good at this, then you can make these characters interesting. But if you're not this is where you know the rubber meets the road and because we have i i think you and i both agree for thor we i think we thor's both gonna be very high thor's I think gonna be think, good yes, i don't christian think there's bale any way around like it. i mean like yeah. i just think you know besides having christian bale in it who we both love i mean i think we just think that movie is a movie we're gonna walk out of and we're gonna be like good. boom great good. yeah I, I like i actually would be disappointed if it's not great i honestly yeah. have nothing left i on like i wish that it's it it's a god killer Kill them off and like, you know, like just I, I will uh, never it, it would be very difficult for them at this point to do anything that will change my mind that the that the whole thing shouldn't have ended with endgame. And I and I've never disagreed with you, Brent. Yeah. I've I, I always say like if they want to do it, they want to do it, but endgame, yeah. it was called endgame for a reason. Right. And we've gotten some good stuff, you know. I mean, yeah. the black the Black Widow thing was due overdue, yeah. and Spider Man was obviously great. And I think that uh, Thor. Also, say Spider Man's different. I think it's yeah, a little be, bit. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I, I think that's different. But like, if we want to do all these side characters, it right. just doesn't work. Some of the shows, have you know, been good. some of the shows haven't been yeah. good. You know, but the biggest thing in Marvel is always Iron Man, Spider Man, the Avengers, X X Men. Yeah, and that's it. And it's like these side characters never work, and don't try pushing they're, them on it. Just they're side characters for a reason, right? Yeah, yeah. Because so. like even like look at and we've talked about this, but look at how successful the Guardians movies have been. They've tried to launch Guardians comics multiple times, and they never make it's it. Bad. Yep. They no. never make it. It no. doesn't need to be bad. I mean, part of it is part of it is comic. It, it's a whole thing. That's a whole another discussion for a right. Moment. It's a whole other discussion. But this show really needs to pick up steam in a hurry. Yeah. Or else it's going to be getting a weekly boom. <laughs> yeah. So, exactly. Uh, media, media recommendations. Uh, for me, uh, watching Abbott Elementary. Uh, it was on ABC. It's on Hulu right now. Really good show about like elementary school teachers. It's so funny. I can't actually remember a time I watched a sitcom and enjoyed something this much. Like it's so funny. It's a, 
No, I mean like in the recent memory, oh. like oh, you okay. know, in recent yeah. memory of like new stuff. I mean, obviously, yeah. Seinfeld. God, Lord, been twenty five years yeah. now. The Office That's has even been 20. up for ten years. Right, ten years. It's just like this show is really well done. It's kind of officey and new parks, uh, parks and recreation in that like people, but they don't do it that often. True. Um, it's very very funny, um, especially like you're a teacher. You know, you've done the teaching thing. I'm a teacher right now. It's like. But I think that aside, it's just like, it's so well done. It's so funny. All the characters are so great. Um, the lead character is also the writer of the show. And so it's really good. Uh, we've really been enjoying that. Um, the Ultimatum, we finished that up. That stupid show on Netflix about people are just like, do you want to get married or not? That shows Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey. It's so bad, but so great. It's so stupid. Like, it's just... You turn your brain off kind of show. I recommend that for a turn your brain off. Um, one chick on there is pretty great. Uh, she's such a mess, but I love her. She's great. And then a uh, book recommendation. And I literally just started to say, I mentioned the heist uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, by Ernest Volkman. And that's a really good book. And that is uh, not the actual book that Goodfellas is based off of, but a book where the movie Goodfellas is based off of. It sounds weird to say that, but mm -hmm. um, Goodfellas is one of the great movies of all time. Uh, and this is the heist of this. This is actually based. This is what actually happened. Really good. But, and this may be my book of a long time. And I, this book came out in 1989 uh, by to Tobias Wolff. This Boy's Life, uh, it's a memoir of him growing up in the 50s. Unbelievable. Unbelievable book. Is it, um, it, was he Irish? No. He was grew this, up. Is this what Belfast was adapted for? It is not that. Uh, he, grew up, he grew up and his mom and him traveled across the country. It's actually turned into a movie that stars uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and, Leonardo, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Robert De Niro in the 90s. I've never seen that movie, but I don't say so I started this book today at three and three o'clock in the afternoon. And the only reason I had to stop reading is because I had to pick Janie up from work. I absolutely love this. It's a memoir. Uh, I have this thing about memoirs. It's like either a memoir should be good enough that you just don't want to sit it down or it's bad enough that you just don't want to ever read it again. There's no in between memoirs. This is a perfect memoir. Like I, I, every second I've had today where I have time to read it, it's so, so good. I, I can't wait to watch the movie. This book is so good. I I really am like shook by it. It's he went through a lot. I I have another book on the shelf that Janie got for me that I can't wait to read. I just I'm gonna finish the book tomorrow. Um I read a hundred pages of it today in 80 minutes, and I plan on finishing it tomorrow because I just cannot get enough of it. What about you, Brian? Um <clears throat> Young the Giant released a new single yesterday. Nice. Um, and they're going to be releasing a new album, full album later this year. The album's titled um, American Bollywood. And uh, the song's pretty good. Uh, you can find it on Spotify. And I was just, it was just funny because that's an awesome face. I'm using that in the thumbnail, by the way. Uh, Me yawning? <laughs> yes. Nice, yes. good. You look like a pig man from Twilight Zone. <laughs> pig man. I don't know why I'm yawning so much. You know, yawning is actually a sign of your paying attention really yeah it's trying to like energize huh. yourself yeah huh i haven't yawned once anytime you've been talking sounds good it sounds about right <laughs> i just looked up and you were making this do you remember all the like the weird pig men from all those old twilight zone shows oh hell yeah you ever watch those like they always had like a new year's eve marathon and stuff oh, i loved twilight zone man. it's crazy we could go back and do like a twilight zone episode I we love should. the Twilight Zone. We should do I love like the that. Twilight Zone. Uh, so, yeah, I was doing that and then just watching everything to get caught up for, yeah. for everything. So I would recommend uh, three out of the five things that we talked about tonight. I would recommend sure. Obi-Wan. I, rec I would definitely recommend Under the Banner of Heaven, and I would recommend Hustle. And then yeah. I wouldn't really recommend Miss Marvel unless you're, like, 13. And then I wouldn't recommend Jurassic world dominion unless you're a hardcore jurassic fan slash don't just don't have have just buttloads of disposable income or you just like locust being on fire 
That's cool. Yeah. Are you an Indians fan? Or I'm sorry, a Guardians fan? And you just like seeing John the Chamberlain wipe away. Covered in midges. That's hey, they're gonna be in, like they're they're in LA this weekend. I thought about going. Um, I've been to LA twice in the past week and both yeah. experiences have been rough. Right. Um missed the first inning and a half of the Dodger game, or oh, missed basically piece. the first hour of um the concert. dead and company. But you know yeah. what? There's nothing like I'll tell you what, and you know, I'll finish with this. You'd be pissed off, all those things. The second you walk into a baseball game, especially here in beautiful Southern California where it's 70 degrees and the sun's shining, still it's going down. Get that night, nice pink issue. You got a Dodger dog in your hand. Get a nice, you know, a nice brew. And you're just there and you're just, wow, what a rush it is. I mean, it just, it absolves all, all those piss offness you have. It's a beautiful place. Brent, when you come out here, um, hopefully we'll go to Dodger Stadium. We'll catch a game. We'll have some Dodger dogs. It's a beautiful, beautiful stadium. Um, we'll go there early. So I'm not seeing traffic for, I'm not someone that complains about LA traffic. I, I do not complain about LA traffic. This is a system. This is a systematic problem that they haven't figured out this year because I've been to Dodger games 10 times now. And this is the first time where this has been an issue. Uh, I think it's a COVID problem. And I think this is where we just need to end COVID and we just need everyone needs to get hired. And you know, that's just where we're at. We just, we don't worry about it. It's like the cold or the flu. You get it. You go home. You stay home. You, you get away from everyone else because I need to see baseball. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> uh, the other day here, it was 90, 93 degrees and the humidity was so high that it felt, <clears throat> according to my weather app, uh, felt like it was 107. Did you go for a run? No. I love it. Like, I like, like a like hot, slothy run. Like when I was at Miami, I'll be doing it yeah. in Chicago. I'll be doing a nice, hot, slothy run in the middle of July yeah. in Chicago. I, um, no, I didn't do that. I did play basketball tonight and it was humid. So a lot of sweat. But, Church. Uh, well, you, th- you think it was because it was humid because of the weather or because you're in uh, the house of God and you're a sinner? Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> Someone call me. Someone call me. Yeah, that's my mom. She'll like that joke. Right, Shallow that's Sherry. fine. Hey, <laughs> well, does, is she? Does Sherry pray for my everlasting soul? She does. Oh. Yeah, she definitely does. Yeah. Well, at least somebody is big fan of Brighton. Yeah. Well, listen. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Somebody asked to me. <laughs> I just feel like <laughs> since we're here, yeah, well, I, I feel like you know. When people say like, "Oh, well, I'm praying for you," it's like, yeah. "Well, you could make me a sandwich." My mom can't make you a sandwich. She can't make she's, me a sandwich. Yeah, right, she, right. She's doing the best. But she like can when I, you, like when I go, uh, my dad's thing, you know, when he passed away, it was like, "Well, we're pro-, and people, <laughs> <laughs> you know, people send things and they send the flowers and and yeah. someone." Someone um, sent a uh, sent a blanket that said like you know forever in the bosom, <laughs> forever in the bosom of heaven or something like that. And my mom's reaction as soon as they got through the line was like, well, "That's going in the garbage." <laughs> <laughs> you, you think they went ever sent like a box to someone and he opened up and just says thoughts and prayers? Oh my god, it's that just, is fucking incredible. Say that to me if I die before you, Brent. <laughs> Just send whoever. Well, there. if we, well, like Dallas said, if if we blow up, we know who's dying in a bathroom first, and it's not going to be me. <laughs> Your words, <laughs> dying in the bathroom of my yacht. Yeah, I hope so. I hope I do it. it it's. Like, yeah, I mean, like you, like you said about the one thing, it's like, well, thoughts and prayers and two dollars and fifty cents get you a coffee at Starbucks. Yeah, not even now. I, I, I was wrong yeah. in this minute. I went to Starbucks the other day. It was three fifty. I'm not a Starbucks guy, so. And you know, it was funny. Is like, I, I won't say I'm not a Starbucks guy. I just got like gift cards for my kids, and so I yeah. have to go there to use the Starbucks gift cards. 
I'm a, you know what? I just brew my own coffee at home. I'm yeah, man. I'm not a, listen, I'm a, man. I'm a pour I, over. I'm a I'm pour over a, queen uh, and I'll just do it. Do you do I'm a pour not, over? I don't know what that means. Like okay, so you're a, not a pour over. In a thing? Like a pot? Yeah, you take a little thing, you pour it over and you get a nice, nice get a little blend. No. You set your temperature. I drink, you, I drink coffee black. I have a K cup. Well, I, I also drink coffee black, right? It's, it's so black. I have a curate. Oh, so you hate the environment. In there. You're the reason why we're all going to die soon. Akira. Yeah, me specifically. You are the reason. Very, very much. I am very. My also, I also burn are... trash. I also okay. burn trash in my backyard. And every chance I get, I just go outside. Like, I'll tell you what I do is every year I get from someone one of those um, Old Spice uh, gift sets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, He's the, buried the, in the ground. deodorant and the um, the spray and the soap. And I don't use the spray. So I just walk outside and I, I hope so. Yeah. And I just spray it in the air and I just, yeah, and I just yell at the top of my lungs. <laughs> green deal this, you sons of bitch. I like to think you just take those, you just go to the ocean and you see like yeah. the closest whale you can find, just blow in your blowhole. Yeah. Like, mace. like, like, mace. yeah. He's yeah. like, what well, the fuck do you think you're doing? You know what? While Creature. we're here. Yeah. The paper straws with the with the turtles. I'll tell you, I'm anti paper straws. Fuck those straw. sea turtles. Fuck those Just sea turtles. Drink your drink your drink like a man. Don't use yeah, a straw. I, I need a straw. I would prefer to be plastic with a little bend in it. I don't care about those sea turtles. See, the, b- listen, man. I care about the sea turtles. I don't care about drinking turtle, my drink like a man. If a sea or turtle like a, a woman. is not, if a sea turtle is or a them not, man, them man. If a sea turtle is not agile enough to not take a straw to the nose, then that sea turtle deserves what it gets. Fuck those sea turtles. Wow. Well, it was Listen, fun doing this last. I was, I'm happy that this is our last episode, Brenton. Um, what? It was Who's really coming real, after me? Peter? Sea turtle people. You got, you got sea turtle conservationists coming Listen. at you hard. Listen, Galapagos, head on a swivel. Also, just this is the thing I'll support you on. Make better paper straws. Don't make paper straws. Or, or just recycle drink your drink like a man. Recycle your plastic straws. Drink your man like a drink your drink like a man, Brent. Drink your man like a drink your man like a like a beverage. Uh 6 a.m. 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 3 a.m. Hawaiian Aloha. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your mothers. Ring that bell, yeah. Comment and subscribe, especially comment if you have a name that sounds like you're from the Boston area. Definitely comment. <laughs> like we really want those comments. <laughs> what was that one? Uh, Patty, Patty, uh, like... Patty O'Flannery or something. I don't know. Mouth. <laughs> like 100 comment on those. Patty O'McShaughnessy. Um, Patty O'McShaughnessy. <laughs> uh, really appreciate the Boston comments. Right. Uh, you know the amazing thing? He knows how to use a computer, which that's something. Hey man, CT's from Boston. Watch out. He's CT like an engineer. from Boston. And if this gets him, uh, well, CT's, there's an exception to the rules. Sure. We all know that. Um, it's so we're going to pepper your sauce. So <laughs> don't ever go. forget that. We yeah, gotta we got to go. Here. We got to get out of here. Great over. episode. It's a great episode. It's over. Thanks for listening. Take care, friends. Thanks for listening.